John with WesleyGospel.com. I want to talk about uh, the uh, massive layoffs and job losses and massive firings that are going going on across the world right now. Um, I work in the tech industry, so that means that I do sales and cold calling, telemarketing, and appointment setting for what the, what are called loosely tech or technology companies. It's just an it's just a you know, there's the fancy ways of saying it. There's a lot of companies out there that um, they they call themselves tech, they call themselves SaaS, they call themselves technology. Um, they're just software companies. That's it, software. They create a software program, or maybe they're uh, maybe they're computer companies. You know, in big cases, like really really big cases. Um, like IBM or Dell or something like that, then yes, they're manufacturing. They have, you know, manufacturing plants, factories where they're creating computer systems. But nine times out of ten, when we're talking about the tech industry, the industry, uh, we're talking about software companies. These can be as small as one or two people, a husband and a wife team operating out of the, the guy's basement. He created a, you know. A software program and he's trying to sell it I can cold call for people like that right or it can be some mega monolith fortune 500 you know it's it's the whole industry so uh, there's been quite a bit of news that has come out recently um, and, uh, and and in the past several months basically saying that the entire in, uh, tech industry is coming under attack right now that's just my industry my little narrow industry but we all we all know that it's happening to every single industry right now. According to uh, 365DataScience.com, uh, the tech industry 27% of all of tech industry HR and recruiters have been fired. 22% of all tech industry software engineers have been fired. Uh, seven percent of all sales and marketing employees in the tech industry have been fired. Four point six percent of all customer service representatives in the tech industry have been fired. And four point four percent of all of the PR and communications public relations personnel in the tech industry have been fired. So. Um, that's what's going on in my industry, and I can tell you from personal experience, it's been very scary trying to find projects or even just normal W-2 jobs, which I hate and often preach against on this blog, um, in sales. It's just there's non-existent availability for jobs right now. It's uh, you can apply to and 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 or email 10,000 people right now and get like a nil response either zero maybe one or two people will respond which is insane because in a normal healthy economy if you send out 10,000 if you send out 5,000 job applications and 5,000 emails you're looking at like 30 interviews okay um, and I've experienced that before <laughs> um, right now it's crickets there's nothing going on um, but when I say nothing, what do I mean? There's nothing going on in sales right now. Um, here's just a, a just a just a snapshot from that article, 365DataScience.com. It is an article that came out two months ago, so it's still pretty accurate. Um, it's called, Who Was Affected by the 2022-2023 Tech Layoffs? Okay. And it says companies like Twitter, Amazon, Meta, that's Facebook, Microsoft, Alphabet, that's Google, and Apple. The number of layoffs in last year, 58% Twitter. It's more than half of Twitter's employees were fired. 15% um, of Facebook's employees were fired. And smaller amounts for those Fortune 500s. So one of the things that I've observed, um, not only from applications, but from this objective 
researched interview uh, article is that a customer service representative only has a 4.6% uh, layoff rate. While everybody else is getting thrown on the chopping block, customer service representatives are still hanging on to their jobs. Why is that? That's because um, they are still needed, especially by the really big companies. The really big companies still need customer service because if you any if you understand basic elements of business and um, sales processes, um, once a customer becomes a client, it's not like a one time. So a customer is somebody who walks into a store and buys something off the shelf, gets a thing that's seven dollars and twenty five cents, and they leave. That was a customer. A client is a long term customer who's under a subscription or something to a mega monolith company. It's a long-term customer. So this is where the customer service representative is needed. Um, it's really client service representative. Sometimes they'll call them client support or something like this, but it's a long-term customer uh, agent that you can have a conversation with about your problems, your difficulties, your hang-ups with the product or the subscription that they've subscribed to. So I would have to say, and I'm already starting to get a pickup from this, that um, if you are a phone-based employee uh, or even a, a software engineer or a recruiter, um, if you're one of these people or if you're just any of these people that – it's not just even in the tech industry, just if you seek a customer service position in any industry right now, I'm not going to say it's going to be a booming opportunities, but you, it, it seems to me that there's a higher chance of landing a job and even a job working from home if you focus on customer service as as a job, at least for a temporary solution until you can go back to your calling. As I've said many times, 1 Corinthians uh, 7, 17 and 20, the Apostle Paul talks about your calling and staying in it. But what about those times where people go through recessions and every the whole entire nation, as well as all other countries, all business is just wacky and things are just not the way they normally are? How do you fulfill your calling then? How does an HR person or a software engineer fulfill his calling when there's massive job layoffs in that category? That's confusing. Um, my only answer is, um, is that abandon career idolatry in those moments and just take what you can get. Um, because the, uh, the priority should be to have money for your family. You know, it, it, most people don't have massive amounts of savings that they can just live on and ride out the storm through these times. So I would have to say, humble yourself, get a customer service job if you can, or at least become like a checkout line worker at at a grocery store. I mean, these are humbling times. These are weird times. These are times that don't have to affect your career if you don't let them. In fact, these are times that, you know, once you get the job, it doesn't mean you need to put it on your resume and ruin your entire career track. It just is a way, you know, for you to pull money in until everything goes back to normal again. What did cause this economy and what is what is the reason for all these bizarre layoffs like coming out of nowhere? What's the reason? <clears throat> well, I'm not an economist, but I do know a thing or two about the effect of the S&P 500 upon the economy. The S&P 500 is the top 500 stocks in the stock market. And, um, and as you can see, even in this article where this guy is saying, look, the industry, the industry, he's looking at companies that just so happen to be on the S&P 500, although he's not making that connection. So what does that mean? Well, it's, it's investor panic. I, I personally believe the theory of those 
like is expressed in How Do You Be Your Own Stockbroker by Charles Schwab, that wars and rumors of wars, basically Vladimir Putin tried to invade Russia. I'm sorry, he tried to invade the Ukraine and it created this panic among investors and stock people. This always happens in stock market history. If you go back in, in, the, in the past and look at every single time America has been involved in a war of any type. The Wall Street Journal covers news articles on the war and the stock market plummets. And as a result of this, layoffs are the ripple effect of that. It's caused by wars. Um, so uh, that's the bottom line. It, I mean, it's caused by wars. When there's uh, Philip Fisher in Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits, he calls it a war scare. Okay, so we're in a war scare right now, which means that all the investors um, – and even institutional investors like Merrill Lynch or uh, Fidelity, these these groups, they're they're scared because um, expenditures on military become more important than expenditures on the everyday day-to-day -day business, and people just get scared for some reason. Investors and businessmen get scared during wars and it affects layoffs it makes layoffs happen um, and uh, other phenomena happen like uh, oil prices going up and, and, and do I have an explanation for everything have I connected the docs perfectly no I haven't but you know there are economists out there that spend thousands of pages trying to explain why these things are related but you know there's always going to be some crazy tyrant trying to conquer another nation and throw everybody up into a frenzy over a war okay if not just the general military industrial complex that exists in this country where people literally idolize the military and think that it's like in order to be a real noble man you have to be a soldier at least one point in your life I mean, so it really boils down to war spending and um, scares about like maybe being bombed by a nuclear bomb, for example, that causes businesses to lay off massive amounts of people. You might say, why lay off people? Sure, there's a war scare over there, but why fire a bunch of people? That doesn't seem necessary. The firing happens as a ripple effect from – the stock market crashing. When stock markets crash, all businesses lose supplementary funding because many businesses actually supplement their operating costs from stock holdings. When the stock markets crash, the operating costs of small businesses fall as well as other businesses. And then, of course, of all the other people that are involved in these businesses. So, therefore, layoffs end up happening because people have less money to spend <sighs> And so they, they fire their non-essential workers. And it becomes a competition of job. Uh, it becomes a survival of the fittest type of a situation. And uh, only the most competitive employees remain. Um, so is God to blame for all this? Absolutely not. This is 100% man-caused and 100% uh, man-focused. And all of this is coming from humans. It's all coming from humans. It's coming from government people. It's coming from people who are have war in their hearts. There's coming from from uh, investors, and it's coming from business owners. It's coming from human beings. And people turn around and they blame God. It's like, why did you allow this to happen? What, all of a sudden, God is to blame now. God is to blame because Vladimir Putin wanted to invade Russia. God is to blame that uh, the stock market crashed, God is to blame, that people decided to fire a bunch of people because they didn't have the capital? No. These are human institutions, and it's 100% human error at work here. Um, so, you know, the question of the Christian, how are you supposed to respond to a situation like this as a Christian? Number one, cast your cares upon the Lord. Uh, 
that's that's number one right there. Um, I found a website. Uh, you know, this, these are these are experiences that make people very anxious. There's a lot of a lot of anxiety associated with this, obviously. Um, so there are some Bible verse websites that I found. Um, top Bible verses on job loss. Top Bible verses on um, layoffs and job loss. Okay. So I'm just going to read some of these. This is these are some of these websites are really neat, like ChristianQuotes.info and Bible OpenBible.info because they they bring Bible verses up and it's based on democratic voting. Like people actually will vote on what they think the best Bible verses are for a given subject. That's pretty cool. Um, you've heard this one before, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. Well, if you're a Christian, that applies to you. And uh, it gives you insight into what God's intentions are. You know, um, when there's massive layoffs going on, you, you can you can bank on Jeremiah 29, 11, that God's opinion about the matter is still that he has plans for welfare, not for evil, and he wants to give you hope in the future. So, you can check that one off that God does not cause these things that are evil and despairing. God is not the proximate cause of that. And then you're going to have, you know, a lot of paranoid people say, God's judging the world for their sins. You don't know that. Uh, did you have an open vision? Nine times out of ten. No. These just go around saying that, drawing conclusions, right? Uh, John 16:33. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. What does that mean? Jesus said, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. What? Jesus had a construction business and he walked away from it, de depended entirely on the Holy Spirit, and it was at a stage in his life where he said, I have nowhere to lay my head. Foxes have holes, and they're better housed than I am. In other words, Jesus Christ, at a stage in his life, uh, had a business probably employing his brothers, um, and because he was the oldest son, had a construction business in Capernaum. And then at another stage in his life, he's like, I don't have anywhere to lay my head. The foxes of the holes, uh, and the birds in the nest, they're, they're, they have better house than I do right now. So in other words, Jesus was totally 100% homeless at some point. How could God the Father let that happen to him? Well, God, God didn't make that happen to him. Okay? Why, why do we feel like we need to bring that idea in here? It's based on determinism. That's in a determin and Bible is not deterministic. All right? Accidents do happen. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In other words, rely on Jesus and his lifestyle to give you grounded values during times like that. Um, Jeremiah 41, verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Why does the Roman Catholic Church have poverty alleviation and charities? Anybody? It's because God allows it to happen on a massive scale. It's not because it doesn't exist, it's because it does exist. And it's illusory when people sit behind their office job and they put all of this idolatrous trust in their job. It's an illusion. Um, let's see here. Philippians 4.19, my God will supply 
every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And that may include St. Vincent de Paul Society, and that may include Catholic Charities USA. It may. Because it says, my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory. So don't tell yourself, oh, that means I'm going to still hang on to my office job because God wouldn't let that happen. No. I'll tell you what God lets happen. God lets the Roman Catholic Church provide for the poor and needy through the St. Vincent de Paul Society and Catholic Charities Unit USA when they experience job loss and homelessness and still can't find a job. That's what God lets happen. And unless you're willing to accept that idea, I'm sorry, you're living in a bubble. You're living in a bubble. Now, does this mean that you can't get back on your feet again? Absolutely, you can get back on your feet again. But, you know, uh, the reality is we need faith in God. And the people who, the problem with super competitive job people who never get fired is they, they, they lull themselves into a spiritual slumber. They never experience times like this. And, um, and they're idol, idol worshipers. The Bible says greedy people are categorically idolaters. Why is that? Because their job is an idol. Their job is man-made, just like idols were man-made. And they think it provides for all of their needs. Except, of course, when an economy comes and there's massive millions of layoffs, then you need to like maybe trust in something else, maybe something that the economy can't affect, like God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these things will be added to you. First comes the kingdom of God. That is the spiritual and mystical and supernatural and paranormal, Pentecostal and charismatic elements of Christianity that are based on experiences of the Holy Spirit, angels, and even demons sometimes. Seeking the kingdom of God. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. He's talking about the presence of God. Seek first that. Mysticism. Christian mysticism. Seek first the kingdom of God. Second to that, you're to seek his righteousness. That means the biblical commandments, moral commandments in the Bible. Uh, it becomes, this is the priority list for Jesus. Mysticism comes first. Moral commandments of God in the Bible come second. And then the third priority is these things. And what were these things? If you read the context, these things are jobs and paychecks. Okay. But in a materialistic, science-saturated culture like America, we take kingdom of God and righteousness out, and we think that these things is all there is. What does it say in, Rome, in Deuteronomy 8? That you forget the Lord your God, and you say, I have created this wealth with my own hands. The job is an idol. The job is a man-made, manufactured idol. Psalm 50 verse 15, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. That means do not believe that science and naturalism have an, have an answer for everything. They have an answer. It's just that not all of their answers are satisfactory. When you trust in the Lord, you're having dreams, visions, the voice of God, signs, coincidences, impressions, the presence of God. You know, stuff like that. Not your own understanding a.k.a. rationalism, scientism. Science is the only answer for all information in life. Your own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord. Do not lean on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord and his 
divine interventions and his private revelations that you will journal carefully to analyze what it is he's trying to get through to you about. If you do that, then he'll he'll make straight your paths. He will guide you where you need to do what you need to do. God does move in mysterious ways, and it can be hard to unveil that mystery. But get real with him and pray to him, God, I want you to mysteriously speak to me. That's better than nothing. And then you'll 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 know what to do. Jesus said in, in, in Matthew eleven, twenty eight to thirty, Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, Jesus said. Jesus said, Matthew 6, 25 to 26, no doubt he said this while he was homeless. Listen, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. In other words, they don't have jobs. They're unemployed. They don't sow, reap, or gather. They don't do any of the things that a farmer, worker, job guy would do. They're unemployed. Unemployed birds. Look at the birds of the air. They're unemployed. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? In other words, you could be unemployed just like those birds. God will allow and let that to happen to you, can allow and let that happen to you, Jesus said. You can be like an unemployed bird, but the Heavenly Father will still feed you somehow. So be content with that. You can't tell me the Jesus Movement hippie people weren't right about some stuff. And I think that their exoriating criticism of corporate America was something they were right on about. Um, so what to do? Well, what's a guy to do in times like this? Well, it's not that he's not supposed to do everything, anything. He's not supposed to give up. He's supposed to change and modify, firstly, his perspectives. Christian spirituality needs to become priority. First, charismatic mysticism, and secondly, plenty of Bible study and commandment keeping. And then thirdly, I would have to say, Look for the most easily available jobs and apply like the Dickens to them all. Uh, there is a program that I use called Lazy Apply. I highly recommend you get it. Lazy Apply, L-A-Z-Y dot com. Lazy Apply, L-A-Z-Y, A-P-P-L-Y. Go to that and get the upgraded um, version. They have the upgrade version once you get the unlimited plan. It's $170. Um, so if you've, you know, if you're a clerical worker, it shouldn't be hard for you to scrape up $170 to put on this. And it will give you unlimited abilities to apply on LinkedIn, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Glassdoor, CareerBuilder, Monster, Seek, and Dice. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do massive applications to customer service jobs. You know why? Because I just did massive applications to BDR and SDR and got nothing out of it. But, I mean, that's the realm I work in. I'm a phone-based, you know, guy. Uh, BDR, SDR, CSR, that's my skill set. It's phone-based. And you know what? If, if I fail in that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to work at a local retail store. That's what I'm going to do. And until everything gets back to normal and I can do what I do, do best working at home cold calling appointment setting but uh things are just weird right now there's no getting around that and when the economy is weird people have got to just adjust and humble themselves and be like look i'm just going to take whatever kind of job i need 
I'm going to go work at some fun park, whatever it takes. But one other thing I would have to say is cut unnecessary subscriptions and expenses as, uh, as well. Um, expect, expect your income and your expenses to drastically drop, at least for, I would have to say, a year at least. Um, and adjust. If you have a snob family culture that you're upholding, it's time to adjust that. It's time to get rid of that. Um, you know, it's an idol, and uh, the Lord doesn't like that. And um, it's times like this where you can you can say, why does God let this happen? Because he wants to cast a demon of snob out of you. That's why. He doesn't want you to be a snob. <laughs> and times like this, you have you have more in common with that homeless guy at the gas station that, than, than you ever thought you did. God bless you out there. This is John with WesleyGospel.com.